Okay, so let's read the clinical vignette. A 10-year-old boy is appointed for consultation due to behavioral problems and suspected autism. The psychiatrist confirms mild intellectual deficit, but the specialist notices unusual facial features, such as a long face, large pointed out or everted ears, a large forehead and jaw. So this is a large jaw. The physical exam shows a high arched palate and macro orchidism. Mother reports birth was on term with standard prenatal care and denies using drugs or alcohol during pregnancy. So fragile X syndrome is another one of our trinucleotide repeat expansion disorders. And in this particular clinical vignette, we have a 10-year-old boy and they have this mild intellectual deficit. And in fragile X patients typically present with this intellectual deficit and it can even cause autism. In fact, it is the most common inherited cause for autism the most common, number one. And it's the second most common of genetically related, genetically predisposed autism after Down syndrome, genetically predisposed. So um, they have these patients, if we look at this patient here, they have a large forehead they also typically present with a large jaw, as you can see here, as well as these characteristic, characteristically large, averted or pointed out ears. So that's the typical, and they also have high arched palate. So if you ask this patient to please open their mouth, you'd be able to kind of see the highly arched palate. Now these patients, they have these characteristic facial features, but they also have, so they also have post puberty, so post pubertal macro orchidism, which means enlarged testes, gonads. So the mother did report that she d denied using drugs or alcohol during pregnancy. Uh, leave a comment or try and refresh your mind about why that is an important question to ask your patient's uh, mother as well. Okay, um, now that's the clinical vignette. The You need to pick up on these characteristic physical uh, facial features, as well as their intellectual deficit. That's very important. The cardinal rule here is to do with autism as well. These patients typically have autism as well. Now, um, let's talk about the genetic, uh, the disease itself and all of that stuff. So, Okay, so this is a X-linked dominant disease, meaning that uh, it is affecting or it the disease lies kind of after the um, lies based on the on the X chromosome. So the twenty third chromosome is going to be affected. The X chromosome. So the the carrier type. The carrier type in females is 46XX and the carrier type in males is 46XY. Based on that carrier type, I have a question. Uh, because fragile X syndrome lies based on the mutation on the X chromosome, which of the two genders is more likely to be affected? Well, the answer, I'll give it to you, is not females. You might have guessed females, but it's males. And that's because of this cardinal uh, rule that females have two X chromosomes 
meaning that even if there is a mutation on one of these X chromosomes, the other X chromosome is still there. They usually still have a functional copy of that particular gene, a functional copy of that particular gene on the other X chromosome. And this phenomenon known as a kind of skewing of X chromosome inactivation. Now it's kind of like fancy words but all it really means is that one of these X chromosomes is the gene on one of these X chromosomes is uh, kind of if I can say it in a casual way is inactivated and the other uh, there's just a skew, skewing right the other X chromosome has the functional copy. Now let's talk about it this fragile X syndrome is a trinucleotide repeat expansion disease like we've discussed and it's based on a CGG which stands for chin giant this is a mnemonic gonads a CGG repeat and when the repeat is greater than 200 greater, sorry, greater than 200 repeats, that is what causes the disease. Anything less than this, so 5 to 200 to 199 are pre-mutation or intermediate, okay? Now recall what those terms are. So 200 to even 1,000 repeats in this CGG uh, amino acid ba base sequence is what's going to cause the disease. This is a trinucleotide repeat expansion disease, X-linked, X-linked dominant. By the way, um, males only have one X chromosome, as you're aware. That's why if one of these X chromosomes, the FMR1 gene is knocked off, that's it. The male will get, therefore, depending on the number of repeats, will get um, fragile X syndrome. Now, in terms of X-linked dominant, uh, okay, what was I saying? Yeah, the FMR1 gene is the gene that's affected here. MFMR1 gene, and this stands for Fragile X Mental Retardation Gene. Mental retardation is now changed to intellectual disability. That's what we call it now. Now, what is actually happening here? Well, your DNA polymerase which is kind of doing its whole, you know, trans process, getting it, getting it ready for DNA transcription, getting the nucleotides that are, you know, the matching nucleotides. It kind of gets lost and it starts to code CGG again and again and again. CGG, CGG. And what then happens, that would have been okay if it were not for um, this thing, which will basically hypermethylate so then what, what happens is that we start to take these CGG repeats and attach methyl groups. And what is the problem with methylation? Or even in the case of fragile X syndrome, when we have hypermethylation. Well, you know something called chromatin? That chromatin, which is surrounding your chromosomes, so let's just make some space here. Okay, that chromatin that's surrounding your chromosomes um, gets increasingly condensed, and therefore, this hypermethylation causes chromatin to become condensed. And what did I say? When your chromosomes overall become increasingly tighter, it makes it difficult for these transcription factors to be able to bind for it for that particular um, sequence to become transcripted or transcribed, transcripted in the first place. So hypermethylation kind of turns off certain genes. FMR1 is important for normal mental development. And with this mutation in FMR1, 
we are going to have hypermethylation so much so that the reason why this um, why this disease is called fragile X is because of this when you culture um, your chromosomes in a medium a folate deficient medium I believe they look um, like fragile the X chromosome will look fragile under the microscope and that's because of this fragile site so it creates these fragile sites on the chromosome X chromosome due to this hypermethylation but what's interesting uh, is looking at the inheritance pattern and how although it's an X-linked uh, disorder why it's still more common in males and now it's all to do with the inheritance patterns and how it's transmitted so let's talk about inheritance and transmission um, just a quick recall um, I talked about uh, anticipation in my previous video and anticipation is when you have increased number or in expansion in the number of trinu trinucleotide repeats so much so that it causes uh, increase it, well an earlier age of onset and increased severity in successive generations so that's what anticipation was and yep it happened it applies to fragile X as well it's a trinucleotide repeat um, disorder um, here what's important is to understand premutation premutation is remember I said that two more than 200 repeats is what caused that fragile X syndrome well premutation is when the parents will have um, not as many they have an intermediate number of repeats so much so that they're asymptomatic but they will have a risk for um, increased number of repeats in their offspring which will cause offspring to have symptoms so they themselves are asymptomatic but offspring will be symptomatic now what was i saying so let's talk about